Hey everybody, welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Oh yes, it is. Welcome or welcome back. It is so nice to see you. Oh man, did I miss you yesterday? I, I really did. Now, I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather, but if you can deal with my raspy voice and maybe the occasional sniffle, we will have a fun episode tonight. Oh yes, we are gonna make one of my favorite autumn treats of all time, the candy apple. Oh yes, and we're gonna learn about the, the fascinating history about it too, both that and the candy apple. And uh, we're going to uh, kind of revisit and update our uh, projects that we started a few weeks ago to lead up to Christmas. I'm pretty stoked about that. They're turning out really, really cool. And of course, we're going to get caught up on some chit chat. So, first and foremost, how are you? You good? I hope you're good. Are you enjoying autumn so far? I am. I have to say, I am. I really, uh, I, 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 going into the holiday season. I said I am definitely going to enjoy the holiday season this year. And so far I have. Halloween was awesome. Autumn has been great. And I hope you're enjoying it too. For real. I hope you are. And um I I you know I have to say I do apologize for yesterday, we did not do our live stream. Both Steven and I were sick. We were um he woke up uh he woke, it was Sunday morning. He woke up Sunday morning um, as sick as I was on Saturday morning. So we have the both, we both had the same thing, you know. And, and the poor guy, you know, he, he has that, uh, he still has the sty, you know, in his eye. And, uh, but today though, um, it's much better. Like the swelling around his eye, all that went down. I mean, still extremely uncomfortable, but at least there's that, you know, it's kind of like working its way out and he has medicine for it and everything. So that that's good. So it's just, it's just a matter of time how, how those things are and colds too. You know, we both had this, this nasty head cold. Now I did go to work this morning and, um, when I got there, I found out that pretty much everybody at work has the same thing, including uh, our main doctor, he actually called out today. Well, he was working remotely, you know, he didn't come in and, uh, he had the same thing. And he also works at a hospital in the ER department. And he said that, uh, there is something going around. Somebody wanted to say hello. Hello, the autumn kitty. <laughs> Um, he did say that there is something going around right now, and it is a very nasty head cold that ultimately settles in your chest. And um, why he, he is seeing uh, so many people being admitted for this one is that because uh, this particular cold, at the end of it, it settles in your chest, but most of your symptoms kind of go away, but you have that congestion still in your chest, and if you don't kind of get that gunk out of there, it can very easily turn into pneumonia. And that's what he has been seeing, you know, a lot of, you know, people coming to the ER and actually being admitted for is for pneumonia and bronchitis. Um, and so I'm going to keep an eye on Stephen because he's prone to that. Since I've known Stephen, he's had pneumonia two times and he's had bronchitis three times. And all of the times he needed to, um, be seen by a doctor, so he's kind of prone to getting that. So I'm gonna keep an eye on him. We'll keep him nice and safe and and well. And you know, I do. I have to say thank you. Actually, thank you for two things. One, oh man, thank you so much for all of your well wishes and and sending that positive healing energy our way and keeping us in your prayers. It's so touching and so so nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And thank you also for last week's comment. Last week on Mondays with Mark, I asked you for your suggestions of anything you thought you may want to see or do for the Christmas season, right? 
and all you let me know let me tell you and thank you so much we are going to have such a fun holiday season this year we have so many projects and diys and recipes it's gonna be so much fun i cannot wait and that kind of brings us to our first topic today and i'm talking about the projects that we started about i think it was about a month ago um and uh, they were to be leading up until Christmas. And the first one was our mums. So, if you remember, we went outside and we clipped some uh, cuttings from our mum plants that were growing out in the garden. And we put them in water to root. Now, the last time we checked in, the roots had just begun to form. And we were going to wait about a week. And then we were going to plant them in little pots like this with some good um, potting soil. So I went ahead and did that, and this is now a few weeks later. You can see nice and healthy, very, very good. So uh, it, I know a few of you are following along and doing this project. Uh, so if you're at this point right now, the thing that you want to look for is, oh, I should have saved one. Shoot. The natural instinct for the mum plant right now is to bloom. So if you see small little buds, you know, like the beginning of flowers, you want to gently take either a pair of tweezers or a small pair of scissors or even just your nails and you want to pull that um, bud off, okay? Because we don't want it to bloom. We don't want it to put its energy into blooming. We want it to put its energy into the plant itself. And as you can see, he's starting to all bush out now. Really, really cool. Now, I did one, let's see, a week after I planted this one, and you can see the difference. He's nice and healthy and everything, but he didn't bush out quite as much. So we got to wait, I'm going to say about two more weeks, and he'll look like this one. So there's the difference between the two there that this has only been in the pot for a week and this one has been in the pot for about three weeks now so that's the difference there okay so um thank you for sending pictures too I'm, I'm so thrilled that some of you are trying this because this is something that I actually never did before I never rooted and planted mums before I knew you could do it but I just never never did it so our next step after this really is nothing it's just caring for it and again that's indirect bright light you don't want it sitting in direct sunlight but you do want to have bright light on it okay so indirect uh, bright light, okay, or under a grow light. These these are totally grown under grow lights in my bathroom, so it, it really really works, okay. And then um, just keep them keep them nice and healthy and everything. And then at Christmas time, I'm going to put a nice little um, burlap bag over the bottom of it and tie it with a red ribbon, and they're going to be um, added to added to gifts that I'm giving away this year. I think that'll be a real nice gift. Then come the spring, you can either like transplant it into a bigger pot or put it right out in the garden. And uh, chances are you will have mums that will bloom in the springtime. Uh, and if not in the spring, definitely in autumn. So that's the update on your mums. Now we also did two other ones. We did the rosemary. We took clippings from our rosemary plants out in the garden, and we are also rooting those. Now, these have been in water for about two two or three weeks now. Yeah, three weeks. They've been th No, two weeks they've been in water now. So I'm going to try to show you there. They are just, see, yep, they're for forming their roots right now. Okay, so the next step. Just the same as the mums, we're going to put them into a small pot with some good potting soil in there. And uh, we're going to keep an eye on them, but we'll check back in in another couple weeks. But um, the goal is to have small little pots with little rosemary topiaries in them to give as a Christmas gift. And I have about seven or eight of them in here, so I think this will be really, really nice. So I'm going to leave these in, a, in the water for about another week until the roots form a little bit better. Better, and then I'm going to put them into pots like, like the mums, okay? In addition to that, we also did our Dragon's Breath Colias. I love this variety of Colias. They're really, really cool, right? So, uh, again, we're rooting them, and as you can see, 
They are nice and rooted. I'm gonna leave these in the water again for another week. And then we're gonna put them into small pots, just the same as the mums and the rosemary. And then by Christmas time, we will have some really cute plants to give away as gifts. I can't think of a nicer little gift than something that is is living like this and something that we grew all ourselves. I mean, it's really, really cool. So I'll give you another update on those in a couple of weeks. And then at Christmas time, we'll have the finished little product there. Oh, I just, I can't wait. I'm so happy these turned out. I did the rosemary and I did the colias before, but I never did the mums like this. And I'm very happy with the way they turned out. Ah, very, very cool. Ah, so, want to make some caramel apples? Ah, yeah, let's go do it, okay? So we're going to go head over into the kitchen, and we're going to make some yummy, yummy autumn, autumn, got to get autumn in there, right? Caramel apples. And you know what? This recipe is so easy, and I, I'm telling you, for real, it is, they're so much fun to do. I know sometimes it might feel like it's kind of intimidating to make a caramel apple from scratch, but... Really, it's not. This recipe is super easy and super fun to do. All right, come on, let's go. Dun, dun, dun. Hey guys, oh, I am so excited to share with you my favorite autumn confection, and that is the caramel apple. Oh yeah. Hey, did you know that candy apples have been around for over a hundred years? Yep, they have. And there's an entire day devoted to celebrating the caramel apple. And that is October 31st. But usually that gets overshadowed by Halloween. But Whatever, both the candy apple and the caramel apple have a fascinating history, too. And I'm talking like, you know, how and why they were made and uh, where they came from, how they originate. You, you know what? Let's check it out because I have all the deets for you. Did I say deets? Really? Did I say deets? O M candy apple goodness. I... Okay, it's time for the debate. Candy apple versus caramel apple. You know, like gingerbread, candy and caramel apples were meant to be enjoyed during the holiday season. I mean, apples are a staple of the fall. Whether it's picking apples or eating apples or making ha apple confections or even bobbing for apples. And bobbing for apples, by the way, is based on an old Celtic tradition for Samhain which is the precursor to Halloween. Now, both of the apple treats we're talking about today feature an apple on a stick with a sweet coating. But from that point on, the similarities end. And I'm talking how they were made, why were they made, and even the time of year they're meant to be enjoyed. So what's the difference between a caramel apple and a candy apple? Well, this is actually really simple. You see, a caramel apple, well, it has a caramel coating on it and traditionally served with a topping of some sort, anything from chopped nuts to candy sprinkles. Now, candy apples, on the other hand, have a candy coating on it, most traditionally made with sugar, corn syrup, water, red food coloring, and cinnamon flavors. And candy apples traditionally don't have additional toppings on them either. So William W. Kolb invented the candy apple in Newark, New Jersey in the winter of 1908. He was a candy maker and was experimenting with a batch of red cinnamon candy for Christmas when he accidentally invented the candy apple. He originally coated the apples in the red cinnamon candy to use solely for a display in his shop window. But the customers who passed by his shop had other ideas. They thought these magnificent red apples would make delicious treats and began buying all the candy apples up instead of the candies they had been meant to be advertising. 
Now, traditionally, candy apples are flavored with cinnamon, although today not all candy apples have the flavor of cinnamon. You find them in all different flavors now, and this culinary treat coined the phrase candy apple red, and that can be used to describe anything from fast cars to painted nails. Candy apples are also called toffee apples and served on the British holiday Guy Fox night along with a big bonfire. But here in the U.S., candy apples were meant to be a Christmas treat. While the candy apple was invented in 1908, the caramel apple wasn't invented until 1950. Better late than never, I say! An employee of the Kraft Food Company named Dan Walker invented the caramel apple when he was experimenting with holiday candy. However, instead of experimenting with Christmas candy, as was the case with the candy apple, Walker was experimenting with leftover caramels from Halloween and came up with the caramel apple. He melted down some of the surplus of caramels left over from Halloween that the Kraft Foods Company had on hand and dipped an apple into it. And thus, the caramel apple was born. Now, in Chicago, Illinois, in the 1960s, the very first invented and patented caramel apple making machine, which was totally automated, was created. Now, before that, all caramel apples were made by hand. Unlike candy apples, caramel apples are known for their toppings, and there are so many different creative caramel apple toppings used today. And caramel apples, they were intended as an autumn treat. So, candy apple versus caramel apple, there is a heated debate amongst dessert lovers, and it all boils down to the candy apple versus the caramel apple. Now, I find that most people have a strong preference one way or another, and if we're talking about a treat for Christmas, the more historically appropriate choice would be the candy apple, since they were designed specifically for Christmas. However, if we're talking in regards to Halloween or autumn, that choice would be the caramel apple, because they were invented with the use of Halloween candy. Now, of course, you can eat either one at any time of the year. It all depends on preference. And so does the answer to our debate. So, we're going to let you decide. The candy apple or the caramel apple? Which one is your favorite? Don't forget to let us know down in the comments section, okay? All right, the race is on. Wasn't that fascinating? How cool was that, huh? You know me, I love stuff like that. But anyway, let's get to our recipe, okay? Now, I know that making homemade caramel apples can be a little bit intimidating. Homemade caramel can be a little touchy, you know what I mean? But today, I'm going to share with you the easiest caramel apple recipe ever, and it's the way they were intended to be made all those years ago. We are going to start with packaged caramel candies. So, this is what you need to do this recipe. First of all, you will need 15 ounces of wrapped caramel candies. Now, I totally, totally suggest highly recommend getting Werther's Original Chewy Caramels, okay? Trust me on this. Through the years, I have tried probably every single brand of caramel candies, okay? This one is the absolute best for, for taste and uh, dippability. It really is, okay? 15 ounces of those. You'll need three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream or heavy cream. You'll also need six to eight apples, okay? And any apple will do, okay? I know it's usually highly recommended to use a Granny Smith apple because it's very, very tart, but honestly, your favorite apple, whatever that might be, 
is just perfect. Now, in addition to that, you'll need some kind of stick to put into your apple. And that can be popsicle sticks, skewers, you could use candy sticks, those white candy sticks, or for a real rustic autumn look, how about some twigs right outside from the yard? That's where I got these, okay? And if you're gonna use real ones, okay, make sure you wash them and dry them out completely first, okay? All right, so let's get started. All right, to start, we are going to uh, use a medium saucepan, okay? And over medium to low heat, we're gonna put our caramels in there, unwrapped, of course, and our heavy cream. And we're gonna heat that over medium low heat until it's nice and smooth and dippable. I think I have another minute or so to go here, okay? All right. Now, you can also do this step in the microwave using 30 second intervals until it's nice and smooth. Now just be sure to use a microwave safe bowl, okay? Alright. And while our caramel is melting here, we're going to prepare our apples, okay? So you just want to make sure that you wash and dry your apples thoroughly, okay? Now I know there's all these recommendations out there like, like take your apples and dip them for 30 seconds in boiling water. Yeah, no, just, just wash them and dry them completely, okay? That's all you need to do. Next, we're going to remove the stems from each one of them by twisting them and taking them off like that. And then we're going to insert our sticks. So, with a firm pressure right in the center, we're just going to insert our sticks as deep as we can, at least halfway, okay? And make sure it's nice, it doesn't fall off, and it's nice and firm, okay? And we're going to do that to all of our apples. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. All right. Our sticks are all in. Ooh, I love the way they look with the real with the real twigs there. Okay. So, next I have a baking pan which I lined with parchment paper ready to go, and I kept this in the refrigerator until we're ready to dip. As I did the apples, okay? We want to keep them as cold as possible to allow the caramel to set around them, okay? Now next, let's check our Oh, yes. That's exactly what you're looking for right there, okay? So at this point, I turned my heat down to low uh, to maintain that temperature. Now, if you did this in the microwave, no worries, because you can continue to reheat it if it starts to set up or get a little bit uh, cold or hard, you know? But for this process here, I'm just keeping it on a low temperature, okay? And we're ready to dip! All right, so it's as simple as this. Which one? Here, we'll start with this one, okay? So what I do is I turn it to the side to let it all kind of pull up there, right? Okay, and I'm going to move over here so I don't make a mess. And it's as simple as this. Dip, spin, voila, lift, let some of that drop off there, all right? And place right on our parchment paper. Just like that. Oh, yes. Now, it's up to you if you want to go, like, all the way up to the top and completely cover your apple or just do a dip like that. All up to you. And, obviously, repeat, 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 repeat. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, wait. Did I hear somebody say, what about the toppings? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, my gosh. So, caramel apples are absolutely known for their toppings. And I'm talking anything from chopped up roasted peanuts, probably the most popular, to candy sprinkles, and also, uh, yes, flaked salt, definitely for salted caramel. This is an awesome combination. And um, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite, oh yeah, know what that is? Crunchy granola bars. Oh, yes. These come in so many different flavors. Look, peanut butter, apple crisp. In here, I have dark chocolate granola. And all you do is right in the wrapper, bang it with the back of a spoon until you get crumbs like this. These make 
awesome toppings. But you, you know what? The, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. Drizzle chocolate on it, crush up some uh, Oreo cookies, even cereal works as a fabulous topping. So, when do you add the toppings? Well, right after you dip them. Which one should we do first? How about my famous granola ones? It's so easy, y'all. You dip it in the caramel, and you can either roll it in your toppings, or you can just kind of, you know, drop your toppings on it. Either way. So, let's do this. Okay. Ooh. I'm getting so into this. I really am excited. All right. Dun, dun. All right. So I'm going to, how about, let's do a sprinkle. Dun, 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 dun. Do that real quick. Oh, this is going to be so good. This is one of my favorite ways to eat a caramel apple for sure. Move it over to your board with the parchment paper. And then as soon as you can, move this pan back into the fridge and leave it in there for at least 15 to 20 minutes for your caramel to set up, okay? All right. Oh, well, we made a mess for sure, uh, but what a fun mess it was. Oh yes, now this recipe will make anywhere from six to eight apples, depending on the size of your apples, okay? And uh, you can store them in the fridge for up to a week and they'll be just perfect. And you know what, I think these make awesome gifts for people too. You could just wrap them in some parchment paper and put a little twist tie on this stick or even they sell cellophane bags for them. But the key is to keep them refrigerated because you know how sticky caramel is, right? They even sell those plastic clam shells specifically for caramel apples. And you can find those online too, okay? All right, so our apples are chilling. Let's get them out and check them out! Okay. What'd you think? Uh, mm -hmm. Nice, huh? And wasn't it like, like, really easy and fun to do. Seriously, I mean, this is such a fun project to do. It really is. I mean, you could get the kids involved in doing it, but you really, really have to watch them too because the caramel is really, really hot and it can burn you, you know? But I mean, other than that, gosh, it's so easy and fun to do and they look super, super nice. And uh, definitely keep these in the fridge at all times because, you know, caramel tends to, even at room temperature, it's so, so sticky, you know? So definitely keep it in, um, keep it refrigerated, okay? So anyway, that one's our, that one's our caramel apples. Oh, here, let me put these down here. I'll take a picture and show you too. And uh, as always, I'll post the recipe and some pictures over on Facebook for you and Instagram. And you can just download the recipe if you want to try it yourself. And uh, you know the drill. Send me some pictures, okay? If you do it, I want to see them. Um, this is one of my favorite autumn things to do. And you know what? I haven't done them in... I don't even remember how long. It's been several years since I've made caramel apples, but I hope you enjoyed our project today, and I hope you enjoyed our time together this evening. I know that I did. I'm very, very, very grateful for being able to be here this evening, even if I did have the sniffles today, you know? <laughs> and I hope you had fun, too. Next week, y'all, you definitely have to check in. It's Moon Madness already. Oh, yes, I can't wait. I do love the Moon Madness videos, I do. Well, anyway, thank you so, so much for watching and spending your time with me tonight. Definitely hit that subscribe button, okay? And uh, hit that notification bell, too, so you know when we have a new video coming out. You can check us out over on Facebook and Instagram, and all of our contact information is listed right down below. That would be our address and our email address as well. If you have any questions on anything we did today, just either comment below or shoot me an email. And uh, I guess that's about it. Thank you again, everybody. Happy autumn, and I will see you next time, okay? Ciao, everybody! Mwah! <laughs>